I'm Cordy, what's up, and welcome to Book Talk. Today I'm going to be discussing the last book in the Percy Jackson and the Olympian series, The Last Olympian by Rick Gordon. So I finished this book yesterday and I'm not going to deny the fact that I got emotional. Like I just said earlier, this is the fifth and final book in the PGO series. So I have finally, I've officially reread the Percy Jackson and the Olympian series and I feel so proud. It's been so much fun to reread these books. This has always been my favorite PGO book, but after rereading it, I love it even more now and it's still my favorite and I just have such a deeper appreciation for it. And this book really means a lot to me because this book really did change my life and I love it so very much. So if you haven't read this book yet and you don't want to be spoiled, I will leave right now because I'm about to go into some spoilers and you obviously don't want to be spoiled, especially since this is the last book. You guys gotta go read it because it's so good. So but not spoiling people. Okay, so The Last Olympian, where do I even begin? Because so much stuff happened in this book. One of the things that I love about this book and what makes this a great finale book is the moment you open it up, bam, things start happening like Percy's going on that trip with Rachel, but then all of a sudden, all of a sudden, Peckendorf shows up and they go to the Princess Andromeda and stuff is going down and it's insane. I talk about this a lot in my Goodreads review, which I'll link down below, but one of the things I love about this book is that you're always on the edge of your seat and nothing boring happens in this like their stuff just keeps happening things go flying everywhere and it's crazy and you don't want to put the book down because you want to know what's going to happen and I love that feeling and that's something I rarely feel while reading a finale book and that's why many finale books aren't the best because it's boring most of the time and stuff's not happening until the last 100 pages but this book you're on the edge of your seat the whole entire time. But back to the beginning with that scene with Percy and Rachel. Oh my gosh reading that I just I cringe because I I, mm, mm, I don't like Rachel like I'm so grateful for her help but I don't like her and when they kissed I was like this is gross. And then things got even worse because Beckendorf died, which was something I was expecting. That was one of the things that I remembered. But reading him dying though was just, it was so hard for me to accept it because while rereading these books, I realized that I have this love for Beckendorf. He's such a great human being and him and Selena are so cute. Like when he pulled out that picture of her, oh my heart. But I felt so bad for Selena when they got back to camp and she found out that he was dead and I just, wanted to give her a hug because she doesn't deserve this and then she dies later on which was super heartbreaking that was something I was also expecting but it was just so sad because I completely forgot that she was the one who charged the dragon she was the one who convinced the Ares cabin to come it wasn't Clarice it was her and then the dragon spit poison on her face and I was like no 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 and then they got the helmet off and it was there and I was like oh my gosh and then she revealed she was a spy which was something I was expecting but I hands down believe that Selena died a hero you cannot tell me otherwise she was not a traitor she died a hero anyway back to the beginning because I'm not ready to talk about the end yet I loved it when Percy showed up at camp and he saw Edavez and he was talking about how good she looked and then they were doing the inspection and he was talking about how she had always been cute but she was starting to seriously get beautiful and I was like my heart all the first the best feels. The person best moments in this book are so iconic and I loved rereading them like the one about Percy asking Anna the best for a kiss for good luck because it's a tradition although it's so good and then when she got stabbed for Percy because of the Achilles bot and when he was in the river sinks he thought about her and she's like his anchor to the moral world I just it was so good. Y'all speaking of the river sinks I completely forgot about this how I don't know. So 
you know, at the end of Battle of the Labyrinth, it leads with that cliffhanger with Percy and Nico having a conversation, and then you later find out that the conversation they had was talking about Percy bathing in the river sinks, so he can have an Achilles spot and be invulnerable. And all that stuff, like, blew my mind, because I somehow forgot about it. I really do not know how I forgot about this, but y'all, when they got to the underworld, and Percy found out that it was all a trick, because... Hades wanted to talk to him. Oh, I wanted to slap Nico so bad. But then Nico was all like, oh my gosh, I didn't know that was gonna happen, blah, blah, blah. And I was like, hey, you can go choke. But then he got Percy out of the dungeon. So I was like, okay, I'll give you props. And then they went to the river sinks. And all of a sudden, Nico was trying to get him to back out. And I was like, boy, you just dragged Percy to the underworld. He's not gonna get out of this now. He's gonna go in the river sinks, okay? Because this was your plan. You're not backing out of your own plan. So he bathed in the river sinks and he thought about Annabeth and it was beautiful because, you know, personal best. And then he got out and, you know, he has his Achilles butt and everything and there's that army there. And then he starts fighting them and y'all, I was so shook because I forgot about this. And then he like had Hades pain and I was like, yo, go boy. I was seriously so amazed at the way Percy fought because it was so much cooler and kick butt than I remembered. Like, all the battle sequences in this book were fantastic. I mean, they were terrible because people were dying and there was a bunch of monsters that I really, really thought that we were going to lose this war, but I obviously knew we weren't because I've read this book before. But I was like, seriously, while rereading this, I was like, how the heck did they win? <laughs> I think my favorite battle was when they were all on the Williamsburg Bridge and Percy and Anibus were fighting side by side, but then Anibus got stabbed. And that was, that was awful, but she, she got stabbed for Percy because she had a gut feeling, even though she didn't know about the Achilles spot, she just had this feeling and got herself stabbed. And then Kronos showed up, Kronos was there, and Percy was like, don't touch her, it was being all defensive. And I was just like, my first of his heart, but it, it sucked though, because you know, Annabeth got injured. And I was like, nobody injures my girl Annabeth. I was acting like Percy in that moment. Okay, but speaking of Kronos, aka Luke, oh, he can go choke. Kronos can go choke, but not Luke, because let's be real here. I was actually really sad when Luke, Luke slash Kronos died. It was really interesting, though, to learn about Luke and his family and his background and going to visit his mom, May, and... Another thing I forgot, I forgot that she tried to become the Oracle, but then when her eyes glowed green, I was like, oh no. Reading those moments about his family and how he felt unloved by his dad Hermes and how he had to stay with his crazy mom who had these visions all the time, I couldn't just help but feel bad for Luke and it made me realize that he had a reason to escape because he was living in a bad environment and I'm, I'm glad he ran away but I'm just upset that his mind got corrupted by Kronos and Luke really does deserve better. I'm glad that in the end he realized that he broke his promise to Annabeth and Thalia because he promised for them to stay a family and to stay together, but he broke that when his mind got corrupted by Kronos and he realizes all of this at the end and he fights Kronos and he decides to take his own life away so he can protect his family. I'm really proud of Luke that he decided to make a change and fight Kronos and stop him. And he became the hero of the prophecy. And I just loved how that all came together. It was so well done. Rick is just such a great writer and he did a really good job with that. And I found it really sweet when the gods all showed up and Percy was like, we need a shroud for the son of Hermes. And Hermes uh, kissed Luke's forehead and then talked to Percy and said that he was going to find his children and claim them and have them go to Camp Half-Blood. That just made me really happy because he realizes that he wasn't a good father to Luke and he doesn't want his children, his other children, to feel the way Luke did, so he's gonna try to be better, and that just made me feel really, really happy. I loved it when Tyson and Grover and Annabeth and Percy all get those gifts from the gods, like how Grover's not gonna be an outcast anymore, and he's gonna be a lord of the wild. I was so happy for him, and Tyson is gonna be a general of the army, and work with Poseidon. Oh, I was so happy for Tyson because I loved him, 
and then Annabeth, she's gonna be the official architect of Olympus and rebuild it. Oh, I'm so happy for my homegirl. And then Percy is offered immortality. Reading that moment where Zeus says, you can become a god, I was like, I obviously knew Percy was gonna say no because I've read this, but still I was like, oh my gosh, I was still like so shook by it. And then when he looked over at Annabeth, I was like, oh, he's gonna say no because of her. And then Athena <laughs> questioned him of that later on. And she was like, and my daughter? And he was like, well, I couldn't leave her and my friends. I just, it was so funny and cute. All was good because they won, they saved the day, you know, but then they found out that Rachel stole Blackjack and it was so funny when Nico told Percy that and he was like, nobody steals my pack of sales. <laughs> so Rachel becomes our new Oracle, which I'm very happy for. Like I knew this was going to happen and I'm very happy because one, it is her destiny and two she can't date percy and i'm just like that's really nice because you know i i don't like the percy and rachel ship and all the percy and rachel moments we got in this book were really hard for me to read and i felt really uncomfortable because i don't like it but i'm really glad after rachel became the oracle she and percy kind of talked and she was all like i don't have to tell the future to tell you what to do right and he was like no and they both realized that he's meant to be a fan of it and i'm just really glad rachel realized that and accepts it i was like you go girl like i just it made me so proud and then we got the most iconic person best moment ever where annabeth comes to his table at the dining pavilion and gives him the cupcake that she and Tyson made and they talked about how they saved the world and it was just it was so cute and he was just he was dying of feels and then he was all like you're laughing at me because he was trying to tell his feelings and then she was like I'm never gonna make things easy for you and then they kissed and I died and then the whole camp saw them and they took them to the canoe lake and then they fell and they had the underwater kiss and it was the best thing ever <laughs> Percy and Annabeth are my favorite ship of all time, if you didn't know, and they just mean the world to me. And they deserve the best and all the happiness in the world. I love them so much, and they've come so far, and it was just so nice to see them finally get together. After five books, after like five years, they're finally at this moment where they're together, and it was just, it was so beautiful. And now, they're in a relationship, and it's just, it makes me so happy. Persephone makes me so happy. And I loved it at the very end when they're standing on Half-Blood Hill and they're holding hands and they're talking about the prophecy, which, oh, when, okay, okay, going back, when Rachel says the new great prophecy, I about lost it. I kind of forgot the fact that Rachel announced the new prophecy in this book. And when she said it, I was like, nope, not today, Satan. I don't want to hear this. But all is good at Camp Half-Blood, everyone is safe. And now Percy and Annabeth have each other and they're, they're gonna be in New York together. Oh my gosh, I forgot about the fact that Annabeth is going to a boarding school in New York. And when they said that, I was like, ah, they're gonna be near each other. And I was just dying. And then we got the most iconic ending ever where Percy goes, race you to the end. I said, you are so going to lose. She took off down Half-Blood Hill and I sprinted after her. For once, I didn't look back. I'm not going to lie, I got teary-eyed reading that. And then when I closed the book, I was like, I can't believe this is over. Like, I finished, I reread all the books, and I was just feeling all the feels because that line, it's just, it's so iconic because he didn't look back and it was just so good. I am so glad that I reread all of these books because these books mean the world to me. And I feel like I have an even bigger love for them now like I already have so much love for them but I love them even more now especially this one because this book changed my life and made me realize that I love to read it brought me to booktube it made me realize who I want to be and what I want to do and I seriously do not know where I would be if I hadn't read the Percy Jackson and the Olympian series but that my friends were my thoughts and feels on The Last Olympian by Rick Gordon. And I am Courtney, and I'll see y'all next time with a new video up soon. So I will see you then. So, bye!